This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For this is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate to heaven. Won't you give God some praise, honor, and glory for all that God has done right there in your homes? Because God has kept us through another week, through danger seen and unseen. And he alone is worthy to be praised. He's worthy from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, God's name is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Won't you give God some praise just one more time for all that God has done? I'm pleased to introduce to you for the first time anywhere our new praise team as they will come now and bring a selection. <laughs> opportunity to thank Miss Courtney Long, who has coordinated and put this wonderful praise ensemble together. Thank you so very, very much. Let's meet the Lord in prayer. Dear God, for another Sunday morning, we give you thanks. Thank you for keeping us through this past week through dangers seen and unseen. Thank you that you woke us up this morning with a finger of your love. Start us on our way. We're so grateful to be clothed in our right mind and to have the opportunity to praise, worship, and honor you. And now, oh God, if there's anything in our hearts, in our minds, in our thoughts that would prevent us from praising you and concentrating on all that you have done and all that you are doing and all that you will do, we pray that you would bid it to move right now in the name of Jesus. Now, God, I bring your people to you. You know every need, every concern, every heartache, and every teardrop. 
We pray now that you'd meet each person at the point of their need. Where there's sickness, we pray that you'd be a doctor. Where there's trouble, we pray that you'd be a lawyer. Where there is confusion, we pray that you'd be a mind regulator. Because your word declares that you will keep us in perfect peace to keep our minds stayed on you. No, God, you know this pandemic storm that we're in, but we realize that you are greater than any storm. So we don't come to tell you how big our storm is, but we come to tell our storm how big our God is. We ask now, oh God, that you would remember those that have been infected and affected with COVID-19. We pray, oh God, that you would touch their bodies right now because you still have more healing in him of your garment than all the hospitals in all the world. We pray, oh God, for those that have been hospitalized, those that are on respirators, those that are on ventilators, that, oh God, that you would touch them, heal them, and while they can't have visitors at this moment, help them to know that they're not alone because you're always with us. We pray earnestly, oh God, for those who have lost loved ones that have succumbed to this virus, those that you have called from labor to reward. We pray, oh God, that you would comfort them as only you can. For earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. No, God, we pray that you would bless your people everywhere. Help us to hear your still, small voice. Help us to always allow the Holy Spirit to be our GPS system. Now we ask that you take charge of this service, that you would have your will and have your way. Use each of us to your glory, because we're just instruments to the end that your people might be edified, you might be glorified, and the devil might be horrified. Allow us to be transformed by your presence and by your power. We promise you as victories are won, as shackles fall off, as doors are open, we won't take any credit for it, but we'll tell everybody that it is because of Jesus. It's in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Amen. Allow me now to invite Miss Courtney Long, who's going to come and bring a wonderful solo that I'm confident will speak to our hearts in this hour. For all things 
that you're going through. Remember, God is only using you. I'll say it again, cause no matter what it is that you're going through right now, hold your head up, stick your chest up, and remember He's using you. For this battle is not yours alone. I said this battle is not yours alone. You cannot do it all by yourself. No, 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 no. This battle is not yours alone. The Lord is the only one who can fight it. He wants to yield you as a vessel. So be open to Him. For this battle is not yours. It, it's the Lord. Thank you, Courtney, for that wonderful selection. Can you believe that today is the first Sunday in May? And also, this is the pastor's official anniversary celebration date. And so I simply solicit your prayers. I praise God for allowing us to be together as pastor and people for 14 years. God allowed me to take the helm in May of 2006. And so this is our 14th year together. And I'll tell you, my testimony continues to be the same when I press the rewind button of my mind and I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me and for us. I have to give him the praise, the honor, and the glory because he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. God's name is worthy to be praised. Allow me now to share some notices and announcements with you. You need to know that we are so grateful to God who has kept us and we know that he will continue to keep us through this pandemic season. On last Saturday, I think I shared with you that we celebrated the life of Sister Janie Jones. I'm sorry to share with you again that we lost one of our sainted members, Sister Enid Irwin and the services celebrating her life will be on May the 27th, May the 27th, 2020. You know that as a result of this pandemic that our funeral directors are booked and we're having a challenging time trying to develop services for our loved ones as we attempt to say goodbye to them and the numbers that we can have are limited. So as we celebrate and share with our persons who are bereft of spirit, please, if you have the opportunity, send them a card, just let them know that God loves them and so do we. Again, I want to ask that we continue to follow all of the mandates of the CDC as it relates to social distancing, I like to say, physically distancing, and let's stay socially connected. Let's make sure that we keep that six feet distance when we're out, especially when we're in the supermarket and just trying to take care of personal needs. Of course, I know that it's been a journey for each of us, and some of us are getting weary on the journey, but the Bible says, do not get weary in well-doing, because in due season, we will reap if we faint not. Please continue to pray for one another. And if you can run an errand or help someone who can't get out, let's try to show God's love in a tangible way. Again, we thank God for keeping us. We do know, as I've listened to the governor and listened and read the news reports, that we are on the downside. The numbers of persons that are succumbing to this virus is decreasing. The number of persons that are being hospitalized are decreasing and the number of persons that are being infected are decreasing. But in order of us, for us to get to the place that we need to be, which is zero, we must continue to be vigilant and care one for another. That's our notice and, and announcements for today. I want to um, express my deep appreciation to Rogers, Lydia, and Michael, who each week have been 
bringing worshipful music to us and allow me to present them at this time as they come to share my favorite song. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Take it away, you magnificent trio. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Sam. You know that sound like about three people. You know me. We're just thankful to be in the house of worship once again and to try to bring something encouraging to you. Now, this is kind of twofold this morning. As you know, it's the pastor's anniversary. So we want to try to do something that is also a favorite of his because during this time, he is working very diligently to try to keep everything together. So feel free to sing along with us. And let's give God the praise. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust.
and the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Our lesson for this morning is found in the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Won't you hear now the word of our God? In the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Xerius, when wine was brought for him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not been sad in his presence before. So the king asked me, what, why does your face look so sad when you're not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of the heart. I was very much afraid, but I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my fathers are buried lies in ruin and its gates have been destroyed by fire? Then the king said to me, what do you want? The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of your grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost than thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, precious Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Now, oh God, allow the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart to be found acceptable in your sight. Speak, O oh Lord, to the end that we might be transformed by your presence and by your power. It's in the only name that matters, the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. The thought that God dropped in my spirit for this day on this anniversary Sunday and this first Sunday in May is fighting for your destiny. Perhaps a subtopic might be, and the people had a mind to work. Nehemiah was the cupbearer for the king. That was a very dangerous job because it meant that the person that was bringing the wine to the king had to taste it first. There were many times people that wanted to kill or cause harm to the king. And so the wine could be poisoned. And it meant that Nehemiah would have to taste it first and as a consequence would die. Also, the cupbearer was one that was close to the king and had to be someone that the king could trust because they had to share a kind of intimate relationship. He would be something like the special assistant to the president or the senior advisor to the king. And on this particular day, when Nehemiah comes before the king, he always had a pleasant disposition. And on this particular day, he was sad. And the king wanted to know from Nehemiah, why are you so sad? Why are you downcast? Where did it come to Nehemiah that the city where his people lived had been burned down and the gates of the city had been destroyed? And so Nehemiah was downcast. He was sad. He was depressed. You know how we feel when we receive news that things are not well at home. Some of you from Jamaica or from down south, North Carolina, like I am, when we get bad news as it relates to our family and things are not well, it causes us to be distressed. And so Nehemiah was distressed and he wept. And I believe that there are times that situation should cause us to be compassionate. It should cause us to weep. It should cause us to be concerned. I weep when I learn about the doctor. Her name was Lorna Spring, who was the director of the emergency service at the First Presbyterian Hospital, committed suicide because she did not have all of the things that she needed to provide for the doctors and all of the PPE equipment that she needed. And also some of the social and mental guidance 
that would be necessary. And so she became distressed. There was another young man, his name was Ryan, and he had just gotten released from jail. And now he was going back to school and he was working as a custodian in this university. And he came down with the COVID-19 virus. And when his family took him to the doctor, they did not give him the right kind of treatment. As a matter of fact, they sent him home. And as a consequence, he died. That makes me weep. When I see how insensitive and the lack of compassion that our president has for our people, it causes me to weep. And so Nehemiah was sad as he came before the king. And the king asked him, what is it that you want? And so if you're taking notes, we need to make sure that in this season that we are compassionate, that we are concerned. And then the next thing that we must do is we need to take our concerns to the Lord in prayer. When, when, when Nehemiah heard the situation, after weeping, he went to the Lord in prayer. How many know that the God we serve does answer prayer? And the word says that after he wept, he prayed and he asked God to prepare the heart of the king. And that is how it is that when he got to the king, the king's heart was already prepared. And I'll tell you, it's still true. The gospel chorus used to sing a song that while you're yet praying, God sends an angel on the way. And by the time you're finished, the work is already done. Trust my Lord today. I do know rich or poor Christ is the answer for you. Then you need to know that God does answer prayer. How many know that God answers prayer? Has anybody ever had a problem and you took it to the Lord in prayer and God turned that situation around? Is there anybody that's been sick and you prayed and God lifted you up? Is there anybody whose money was funny and you went to the Lord and he made a way somehow out of no way? Is there anybody has some crazy kids that just wouldn't get their life on track, but somehow after prayer and much fasting, God turned the situation around and now they're mature and responsible persons who love their parents and love their community. I don't know if God has ever answered a prayer for you, then you need to give God some praise, honor, and glory. The next thing that I want to say, if you're taking notes, we want to be compassionate. We want to take our issues to God in prayer. And because we know that God is going to answer our prayer, we can go ahead and work out a strategy. And so when Nehemiah goes to the king and the king asks him, what does he want? He says to the king that he needs to go home, that the walls of the city have been torn down and the walls need to be built. And so Nehemiah knows that God will answer prayer and he is compassionate and concerned and he has a strategy. God is asking somebody, what do you want? Do you have a strategy? Do you have things that you know that you need to do that you specifically need from God? Nehemiah says to the king, first of all, I need passports. I need letters of permission to get through the city so that I can get on the other side. I'm going to need some timber so that I can build the gates of the city. And I'm going to need some protection because there are going to be people that will come after me. And so we need to make sure that we have a strategy. I don't know about you, but I know that God is going to turn this situation around. I know that he's going to make a way out of nowhere. I know that the time is coming in the not too distant future that we will be back in our sanctuary. And so we are developing a strategy. We're working on making sure that everybody will have a mask. We'll have hand sanitizers. I'll be asking the men to be in position to direct people so that they can be in the appropriate places so that we can be safe. We're beginning to have the build and sanitize. We will try to develop a kind of virtual ministry where we will be able to continue to be in relationship with our persons that meet us online every Sunday. And many of you meet me every day 
in prayer. And so we want to make sure that we're able to continue to connect with those audiences. I'm telling you that you need to develop the strategy and tell God what you want as we come out of this situation. Somebody needs to get that resume together. Somebody needs to take that webinar. Somebody needs to take that cooking class. Somebody needs to take that vocal class, take music lessons. Go ahead and prepare yourself for the blessings that we know that God is going to make happen. Then finally, you need to know that when God brings you out, when God blesses you, when God makes a way, there will be people who will try to distract you. There'll be people that will try to take you off course because there are those that are not invested in the blessings that God is going to pour out for you. And as a consequence, we have to make sure that we ask for God's protection and we must ask God for a strategy as it relates to the protection. Now, there were two persons along with their army of friends that continued uh, to antagonize Nehemiah and his men that were working to build this wall. Um, Sambalik and Tobiah are their names. You will read this. You ought to read the book of Nehemiah. It's a wonderful story in leadership and just how to have the right kind of dis disposition and attitude as you're trying to move in the direction that God wants you to go. And so as they're building the wall, Tobiah and Sambalik, they say to Nehemiah, this wall, what are you guys doing? This wall is going to be feeble. Even a fox could pass by and, and knock the wall down. You guys are just wasting your time. But don't allow people to take you off track. If God has told you to do something, if God has taken you to it, God is going to take you through it. And Nehemiah says to Sambalik and Tobiah, we're doing a good work and we can't come down. And then Tobiah and Sabalik, they developed a strategy so as to infiltrate the work that Nehemiah and his men were doing. And they had a group of people that were going to infiltrate and cause the project to be brought down. And when Nehemiah heard about it and knew that they would be bringing men in to destroy the work that they were doing and even to destroy their people, he developed a strategy. And that's why I want to say to you that you and I, we have to fight for our destiny. We have to fight for that that God wants to give us. And so what Nehemiah does is he talks to his people. He arms them with swords and spears. And while a group of people are working, there's a group of people that are on the lookout to defend the work that they're doing. And what we're going to have to do, my brothers and sisters, as God brings us through this situation, we're going to have to make sure that we are protecting one another. They had one family that was working and another family that was looking out for the family that was doing the work. And then they exchanged and another family would work and the other family would look out for protection. We've got to get to the place that we protect and look out for one another. Yes, we are our brother's keepers. Keeper. Did not Paul say that if your brother's overtaken in a fall, then ye who are spiritual ought to restore them in love and be careful that you fall not into the same temptation. When God brings us back, we have to come back in love. We have to come back looking out for one another. We have to come back looking to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And so ultimately, they did build the wall. They got to build the wall because number one, they were compassionate. I wish we had some folk that were compassionate about the things of God. I wish we had some people that were concerned when your brother and sister get sick or have a problem or a challenge that's too big for them, that we would learn how to weep with them. Because when one of us suffer, we all suffer together. And when one of us rejoice, then we can all rejoice rejoice together. We've got to come to the place where we are genuinely concerned about one another. And then as you are concerned, then you can take your issue to the Lord in prayer. Courtney did a great job last week when she lifted up the words from Joseph Strivens, that wonderful hymn, with a friend we have in Jesus. 
all of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. And then we have to make sure that because we know that God is going to answer prayer, that we have developed a strategy that works in alignment with the will of God. And then we have to set up a situation where we also develop a strategy to protect that that God has given us. And that's why I'm always encouraging us to make sure in this pandemic season, because it's designed to take some of us out, but we tell the devil right now that he is a liar. You will not get any more of God's children. You will not get any persons that are part of the Salem family because we're covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. And then when God blesses you, we have to give God the praise, the honor, and the glory because he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. God's name is worthy to be praised. Allow me to close with this wonderful hymn of the church and it really sort of sums up what it is that I'm attempting to say this morning. And the writer writes, am I a soldier of the cross? Follower of the lamb, Shall I fear to own his name, a blush to speak his name? And shall I fear to own his cause, a blush to speak his name? In the name, the precious name of him who died for me, through grace I'll win the promised crown, whatever my cross may be. Must I be carried through the skies on flowery beds of ease? while others fought to win the prize and sail through bloody seas. Are there no foes for me to face? Must I not stem the flood in this vile world, a friend of grace to help me on to God? Surely we must fight if we should win. Increase my courage, Lord. I'll bear the toil, endure the pain, supported by God's word. Give God praise, honor, and glory, because he's worthy to be praised. In the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. Allow me now to invite that dynamic trio that are filled with the Spirit of God to come now, share our closing selection. Good. Salem, we're coming back at you one more time. But this time, our message is different because we want to make sure that you understand that God is not dead. God is alive and he's moving and he's working. He's moving and he's working. <laughs> In the wind and the breeze, 
Again, from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, keep you perfect in every good work, working in you and through you, that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen.